HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy. HCAM News airs every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, Hillers football battles Westwood in their senior night game. Hillers swimming hosts senior night meet against Boston Latin and more of the latest happenings in Hopkinton. But first, Kent State University honored alumni and Hopkinton resident, Tim Kilduff. The next award I'd like to present is the Centennial Alumni Award. This is our highest honor bestowed upon a former student who graduated from a program within the college more than 50 years ago. This award recognizes an alumnus who has made significant contributions to society, bringing distinction to Kent State University. It is my pleasure to announce Tim Kilduff as this year's award recipient, a proven leader. Tim has extensive experience in public affairs and volunteer organization management. Tim's contributions have been recognized by the Reagan administration, Vice President Al Gore, and Massachusetts governors Weld, King, and Dukakis. Tim served as Boston Marathon race director in 1983 and 1984 and founded the nonprofit 26.2 Foundation, aimed at advocating the virtues of the marathon run and the power of the human spirit. When I received a call from Dean Hannon, notifying me that I was selected to receive the College of Education, Health and Human Services Centennial Alumni Award, my first reaction was to ask, are you sure you have the right person? His confirmation prompted me to take time to seriously reflect on my time at Kent. My Kent experience on the track team, activities like the Major Events Committee, and my membership in the fraternity of Phi Gamma Delta was my introduction to the power of teams. I'm thankful that somewhere along the way, I was exposed to and absorbed the importance of inclusiveness and collaboration. Both are vital attributes, especially in today's world, and especially when venturing into volunteerism. I'm passionate about service and volunteerism as they afford the volunteer the opportunity to utilize their energy and talents while adding value to important community work. Being acknowledged by our university for what little I have done in the community touches my heart. My hope for any student who chooses KSU is that they take full advantage of all that it has to offer and to bring what they have learned back to their community of choice. Oh, and one more thing, go Flashes. Thank you. Tom Nappy here, and we are joined by Tim Kilduff. Tim, congratulations on winning the Centennial Alumni Award and your induction into the Kent State University Hall of Fame. Uh, can you talk about this honor and how it feels to be inducted and winning the Centennial Alumni Award? Well, it, uh, Tom, thank you very much, first of all. And um, I can tell you when I first got a call from the dean of the college, I really did stress. I must have said it three, if not five times in the call. Are you sure you've got the right person? Uh, you know, Kent State is uh, located in the northeast section of Ohio, you know, roughly 600 miles away. Um, and I don't know how they track this kind of stuff. So. As much as um, I really don't think I deserve, nor is the recognition necessary, I, I got to tell you, it, uh, it's kind of fun. And it really did, it made me think about my experience at, uh, at Kent State quite a few years ago. And speaking of that, can you talk about your days at Kent State, uh, what you studied and what it was like to go there? 
Well, you know, Kent State is uh, not far. It's 11 miles from Akron, about 30 miles from Cleveland, northeast section of, of uh, Ohio. And I'm a New Englander, born and raised in New England. So uh, to make that trek out to uh, Ohio 50 plus years ago was like going to the wild, wild west, quite frankly. Um, but Kent was a, was a uh, we used to call it the largest unknown university in the country. There were about 20,000 students then, even then. Uh, and it wasn't, unfortunately, until the 1970s when uh, there were the shootings uh, uh, and the deaths of four students at Kent that really made this, uh, this institution recognized on a global level. It broadened my horizon. It got me out of New England. Uh, it, 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 got a, it gave me a much different flavor for people, places, and things. So it was a real plus for me. That's terrific. And I read that... Uh, after you got your Bachelor of Science degree at Penn State, uh, you went into public relations at American University. Uh, what made you want to do that? Well, you know, uh, Tom, I, uh, I was in association management work and I did some graduate work at, at American. Uh, the, the, the interesting part about my undergraduate work um, was that it was in education and the classes that interested me the most were the interpersonal human dynamics classes I had to do some student teaching. Those were the things that, uh, that interested me. A jump from uh, teaching uh, small group dynamics to sort of public affairs and public relations was not that big a leap. And uh, right now you're doing some great work with the uh, 26.2 Foundation, uh, which to be described briefly promotes the marathon spirit in the history of the Boston Marathon. And, your organization is currently working on building a Boston Marathon Museum in Hopkinton. How is that coming along? And do we have a date uh, for the expected opening yet? Well, to talk about this, you cannot uh, not you can't you can't help but mention Hopkinton's marathon footprint. Uh, we know the race starts here, but uh, in a couple of years, uh, we'll mark the hundredth time that. The Boston Marathon has started in Hopkinton, and that goes back to the Brown family, deep roots in Hopkinton, that sort of thing. So it, it's kind of an obvious place uh, on the, on the, in the starting area of the most prominent marathon in the world to think about building an institution. Um, we call it the International Marathon Center. Uh, it's, it is meant to be global in nature. Uh, it doesn't ha it's not going to have a narrow focus. There'll be a Hall of Fame and there'll, of course, be a museum. But more importantly, there'll be an education component that is wide ranging. Uh, for example, Tom, the development of democracy, as we all know, started in Greece. Uh, and it, it was in jeopardy in 490 BC when the Persians invaded Athens. Uh, the, the Athenians prevailed. That allowed democracy to, 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 to develop. Ultimately, the Battle of Marathon being fought in Marathon, Greece, was the spiritual beginning of marathon running, quite frankly, because the warriors have to, had to force march from, from uh, Marathon, Greece, to Athens to protect the city uh, after they won the battle at Marathon. So the links, the, the commonality between Marathon, Greece, and Hopkinton are significant. Absolutely. Uh, well, Tim, uh, we want to congratulate you on the award. And uh, despite what you think, I think the uh, Hall of Fame is certainly deserved. Uh, so congratulations. And thanks so much for talking to us about this honor. Tom, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Startline Brewery created their annual Marathon IPA. And this year they honored the first woman to ever complete the Boston Marathon, Bobby Gibb. Startline Brewery is releasing a new IPA which honors marathon pioneer Bobby Gibb. Bobby Gibb was the first woman to run the Boston Marathon back in 1966. This is Joe Baldiga, a director of the 26.2 Foundation, and, and I'm, I'm here this morning with... I'm Ted Twenty. I'm the co-founder and uh, manager of Startline Brewing Company in Hopkinton. Very happy to be here today. We have a big event where this is the canning of a special marathon beer by Startline Brewery. 
Yeah, Do you Joe, want to talk about that. Yeah, a I will. Bit? We're, we're first off, we're we're just so fortunate to have started a partnership and become the first uh, corporate sponsor of the twenty six point two foundation right. foundation back uh, when we opened up several years ago. And each spring during marathon season, we launch the Marathoner IPA and the proceeds from these beers. It's the same recipe every year and it's limited edition. Those proceeds go to the foundation. And this year we're really doing it up. We are uh, recognizing Bobby Gibb, the first uh, female to win the recognized winner of the Boston Marathon. Uh, and we're using uh, some of the illustration and artwork from the book, The Girl Who Ran. Uh, which is a, a fabulous kids book and um, we've used that artwork on the can and uh, this year our can release will be on Thursday April 8th uh, we have a couple hundred cases of these cans they are going to be limited edition and they're gonna be highly sought after so we're really excited about this because it's not only helping get the word out about uh, the 26.2 foundation but it's recognizing a, a historic runner uh, for the foundation and for the marathon. Not only is it great beer, but it's a great cause. And as uh, Mr. Twenty mentioned, they have been a strong supporter of the foundation and they were our cor first corporate sponsor. And the 26 Foundation does a lot of good things in the community. We're hoping to build an international marathon center and we couldn't do it without the strong support of Startline Brewery and other corporate sponsors as well. So thank you very much and this is a Great beer, great occasion. We're very excited for it. Well, we're proud sponsors and uh, happy to be partners with you all on your journey for the not only the Marathon Center, but all that the foundation does in supporting marathoning uh, across the world. And should we get a little plug-in? I understand Startline Brewery is now open for business. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've, been, we've been getting through uh, all the challenges of the pandemic. And uh, yeah, we are open. We are fortunate to have a, a full house uh, during our open hours. Uh, those are on the website. Uh, they kind of we're going to keep expanding our hours as things come back and people get vaccinated. But the community support has been amazing. We've been very fortunate uh, with all the support that's been happening during awesome. the pandemic. Good. Hopefully, we'll come this weekend. Right. All right. Stay healthy, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you, Joe. Members of the 26.2 Foundation were happy to lend a hand during the making of the first cases of the IPA. Things are going wrong. There's a lot for me to look at to try to troubleshoot. Um, Today's going spectacular, though. Which I'm riding the wave of my Monday, which was also awesome. awesome. Right. Yeah. But yeah, everything comes through here, and then they come through these. And, and individually, I have to get my levels all set. And uh, normally, there's a lot of beer I got to dump right away because there's a lot of foam that's coming through these lines. Yeah. So. It looks worse than it is. I mean, some people cry a little bit. I did when I first started this job, but I got over it. <laughs> the Marathoner IPA will officially debut on Thursday, April 8th. We are going to take a quick time out, but a whole lot more ahead, including the latest Hiller Sports update. You are watching HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. And welcome back to HCAM News Live. Hiller's Varsity Football recently met up with Westwood in their senior night game. Here's a look at what happened. This past Friday, Hiller's Varsity Football played their senior night game versus Westwood. After forcing a Westwood punt on the first drive of the game, the Hillers found the end zone. Five receiver set, three to his right, takes the snap, looks to his right, and now is going to throw to his right, has a target, it's caught by Keefe, up the far sideline he goes to the 30, all the way to about the 20 yard line, Brian Keefe, a big gain for the Hillers on their very first offensive snap. Out of the pistol this time, Mulvaney to his right, two receivers spread out to his right as well. He'll take the snap, hands it off, Mulvaney up the middle, first down, and the end zone, touchdown, Hillers! An 11-yard touchdown run by Cam Mulvaney, and just like that, it's 6-0 Hopkinton. An 11-yard touchdown run by Cam Mulvaney. 
Westwood responded on the following drive. Maroon, receivers in tight along the right side, takes the snap, rolls to his right, under pressure, throws up field, has a target, and it's caught at the five to the end zone, and I think he might have got in. Yes, he did, wow! Grady Mahoney on the reception, a 39-yard touchdown for Westwood. A 39-yard touchdown reception thrown by Connor Danielli to senior Grady Mahoney. It remained a 7-7 game until the second quarter. Make it second and one from the 46. Out of the gun, takes the snap, rolls to his right, looks upfield, throws upfield, and it is caught at the Hiller's 10-yard line. What a catch by Aiden O'Connor, and what a throw by Danielli. That was After forcing a Hiller's punt, Westwood found the end zone early in the second quarter. Danielli is going to go out of the gun once again. Maroon the back to his left, two receivers in tight to either side. Takes the snap, looks to his left, throws to his left, has a target, and it is caught for the touchdown. Grady Mahoney on the four-yard touchdown reception. And that's his second touchdown reception of the game. He had a 39-yard touchdown reception to make it a 6-6 six six game at the time. Brendan Dunnigan connects with Grady Mahoney once again on a four-yard touchdown pass. The extra point makes it a 14-7 Westwood lead. After the Westwood touchdown, the Hillers would score 35 unanswered points. Up to the line they go. And it looks like they got Lisher in there as the quarterback once again. And he will take the snap, looks to, looks upfield, has Salyards, and it's caught! 40 midfield into Westwood territory, 30, 20, 10, see you later, touchdown, Hillers! And A 75-yard touchdown reception! And that one's not coming back. Right, or excuse me, 85-yard touchdown it reception. Is My math was off there. Ah, math's math. <laughs> well, luckily, we've got a full-time account here, so. That's right. <laughs> The first touchdown in the 35 unanswered point run, an 85-yard connection. Sophomore Robert Lisher finds Cole Salyards on a little trick play. Extra point makes it 14 to 14. Salyards going to line it up out of the gun. Mulvaney the back to his left. A four receiver set, two spread out to either side. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He'll go to Mulvaney. Up the middle he goes, 30, 25, over to the 20, cutting to the near side, 15, 10, staying on his feet inside the five, and did he get in? Just a little bit short, but what a run by Cam Olvaney. He'd be out there to finish this off. We shall see. Out of the gun is Salyards. Mulvaney getting the call up the middle. In he goes. Touchdown, Hillers. And then a one-yard touchdown run by Cam Mulvaney, and the extra point makes it 21 to 14. Maroon in the backfield. The snap is high. The ball gets away. Who got it? It looks like the Hillers did. And recovering the fumble was Aiden Morin. That's over three minutes. If they score, please. And Salyard's going to keep this up the middle. And working inside the five. Still on his feet, pushing the pile. Can he get there? Still on his feet. He just won't go down. And it looks like he finally will at around the two. Here's more and more beyond the trees. Salyards out of the gun, a motion right to left, and he is gonna take it himself up the middle into the end zone. Cole Salyards, a one yard touchdown run. A one yard keeper by Cole Salyards, and the extra point makes it 28 to 14. And uh, that is Salyards out there, five receiver set, three to his left, throws up field, has a target, and it's caught, and he's gone! Touchdown, Hillers! Nicholas Sessi, a 43-yard touchdown reception. A 43-yard connection between Salyards and Nick Sessi. Plus the extra point makes it a 35-14 game. That's how the score stayed until the halftime break, a 28-point second quarter for the Hillers. The Hillers pick it right back up in the third quarter. Takes the snap, and he's going to take it right up the middle. Bounces off tackle. Up the left side he goes. The 20, the 10, the 5. Into the end zone for the touchdown. A 33-yard touchdown run by Cole Salyards.
Hillers led 42 to 21 heading into the fourth quarter. Hillers continuing a drive that started in the third quarter with three minutes and three seconds left. Ends at 9.59 left in the fourth with a four-yard touchdown run by sophomore Wyatt Stevens. To his left, two receivers spread out to either side. He will take the snap, and here he goes up the middle into the end zone. Touchdown, Hillers! A four-yard touchdown run by Wyatt Stevens. The Hillers would take the game in dominant fashion by a final score of 48 to 29. The Hillers improved a two and two overall on the season with the win. Prior to the game, the Hillers celebrated senior night. Check out the festivities on the game broadcast on our YouTube page. Hillers swimming was in action this past Monday in their senior night meet against Boston Latin. Here's a look. Hopkinton Hillers swimming posted results for their meet against Boston Latin and then celebrated senior night. Here's a look at the festivities. That was great. Nice job. Good job there. A little tiny bit short in the entry, but I think it'll score well. Six, six and a half, six and a half. And that'll conclude the diving for the evening. All right, look at this. Alyssa's giving it her all for her uh, senior night here. She's all right, nice swim. Excellent for both of them. Great job, Alyssa, and excellent job, Kevin. That was quite a race, what a finish. Uh, let's see what happens on the turn here. At the minute, you've just got a little bit of um, a lead over uh, Eliz Elizabeth, but Elizabeth is looking strong. She's picking it up her kick. Deirdre's picking up her kick, and Natalie is as well. Really great race. Good race. So, uh, yeah. Natalie, Deirdre, and Elizabeth, really nice. By all five swimmers, actually. I'd love to know the times. I'll have to text the scoring deck. Yeah. That was nice a nice turn. turn. Nice turn. Yeah. Oh, oh. wow. Ooh, Somebody's coming up on him. Well, Declan Cassie, yeah. Cassie. And Cassie. Cassie's, Cassie's uh, right with them. Cassie's going to win it. She's going to win it, I think. Oh, She's I don't it. know. I don't know. It's going to be a. Wow. Whoa, that was Photo some finish. finish. Very nice. I don't know. She put the afterburners on at the end. Yeah. But Declan definitely was right there uh, with her, as was Pierce. So it'll be nice to see the times on that one. Definitely. She wow. and Katie are neck and neck. And uh, Anna is. Uh, She's doing okay, holding her own there. She is. She looks good. She does. She does. All right. Uh, Lucas is looking good. Wow. Davis Davis uh, won by a substantial lead, but there's uh, Lucas for second and uh, Ryan there in third. And for the girls, we have, uh, I think, Katie, then Ishii, and then um, Anna will, will place third. All right. Carbonis. The Dutas. He was a uh, cameraman uh, last year. Yeah, he was. Right? And yeah. I think even the year before, he, he ran it a lot. All right, and the Fishers. They have Alyssa has a twin brother who will be playing baseball at Fairfield next year. Wow. All right, the whole brows. Very nice, the Lucases. 
And um, I mentioned before, Alyssa's the only one who's going to swim, but um, Juliana is going to RPI for lacrosse. She's a goalie. All right, and Pablo. All right, that's it. I think that's a wrap. Nice shot of all the seniors and Pablo. Hillers Swimming is scheduled to wrap up their Fall 2 season Thursday night at the Milford Pool versus Ashland. The Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition is hosting Bike for Prevention, a virtual bike ride April 19th through the 25th. You can find all the information you need to know at their website, mbcc.org slash bike. Our photo of the week, Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Football celebrated Senior Day. Prior to a 48-29 win over Westwood, you could view a big collection of photos from the Senior Day game at our Scene in Hopkinton page. Head over to hcam.tv for more details. Upcoming government meetings on Tuesday, April 20th at 6 p.m., We'll have the select board meeting on HCAM TV. And then on Monday, April 26th at 7 p.m., we'll have the planning board meeting on HCAM TV. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News. Don't worry, next Thursday at 6.30 p.m., we will be back. Over on our YouTube page at 7.30 p.m. is the final Hiller Swim Meet of the season versus Ashland and our HCAM Ed channel and YouTube is going to have the school committee meeting starting at 7 p.m. As always, thanks for tuning in. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.